All right. Well, I'm Michelle. I work here at the library. And I um, have been enjoying growing sprouts and microgreens for several years at home. And I thought it would be really fun to bring it into the library. So what I wanted to do here is just kind of go through a real quick process of growing or starting sprouts and the microgreens. These trays, you don't have to use something this fancy. You can use anything you want. I happened to get these on a really on a good sale, so I just got these. Um, the first thing we'll do is I picked out several different mixes. There's plain peas. These are kind of fun. They're big speckled peas. They grow real tall. These, this uh, is a kale trio. This has blue curled scotch, premier, and red Russian kale. And then this is a fun mix, the superfood mix. So these are gonna grow, uh, the peas will grow tall, and the rest of these will stay a little bit shorter, but these you can trim and put in salads. You can put them on sandwiches, or you can just eat them plain, whatever you prefer. So one of the easiest things to do is just put a little bit of uh, soil in here. This is just kind of a peaty potting soil. It's not, uh, I didn't go outside and dig it out of the dirt. The microgreens are not really going to get nutrients from the soil. They have them in the seed themselves. So we're just going to get the seeds here and just lightly sprinkle them. You do want pretty good coverage, um, but you don't want them too crowded. So it takes a little while. Each blend is a little different. This is the superfood mix so that there you'll see lots of different seeds in here. And then We'll move on to the peas. These are some of my favorites. They taste really good and they grow fast and they, they look fun. So these trays are a real simple thing that I actually found online. They're just a two part tray. They have a drain holes on the top and then the collecting for the liquid on the bottom. The fun thing about this is that as these grow, then the roots will go down into the water. So after the first several days, you'll fill this bottom part with water and the roots will, uh, the plants will get their water from the roots from underneath. Okay, so the soil I used, it has a little moisture in it already, so um, that's gonna get these, give these a good start. But then I also put a little extra water on top. You can use a spray bottle if you want, or you can just kinda sprinkle a little extra moisture in there. And the nice thing about the peaty soil is it doesn't hold on to the moisture as much so the seeds won't rot and the, the drain will let the water come down and drain into the bottom. So this is the fun part. It took me uh, quite a while to figure this part out, but the seeds don't actually want light in the first few days of germination. They want to be dark and they want to be pressed. So what we're going to do here is stack the seeds and kind of give it a good push. We'll stack this one, give it a bit of a push, and then We'll do that again with just another lid here, like that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave them alone for at least three days and let them do their thing by themselves. And when we unstack them a little bit, in fact, I'm gonna put a little weight on it. When we unstack them next, we should see a lot of activity. The seeds should be sprouting and we'll see little, little sprouts. Okay, another fun and easy thing to do is sprouts. Now, these are very similar to the microgreens except that they don't need to grow in dirt and you can eat the root and everything. So the easiest way to do this, these are clover sprouts, very common on sandwiches and salads and things like that. Same ones you'd find in your yard, but we're gonna eat them very young and they're very sweet and tasty. So the first thing that you would do is grab a jar. These, I happen to have these laying around. I did specifically get some sprouting lids. It doesn't have to look like this. You can get a variety of lids. I found these online because you can't find anything local in the store right now. So these are just small lids that you can, um, you can put on your jars and they, they drain and they prevent the seeds from going through the jars. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and put, this is two tablespoons of clover. We'll put that in the bottom. We'll put a little water in. We want to let these soak for four-ish four hours. The bigger uh, seeds will soak for maybe six hours or even overnight. These are pretty small, so I think these will be good. One of the other things you could do is if you buy a large package of seeds, is uh, just measure them out. And it's approximately two tablespoons per quart jar. So I've um, brought way more than we would need to sprout in one 
jar, so I'm just going to measure it. This is a fun little mix of alfalfa, broccoli, radish, mung bean, and green lentil. This particular mix, uh, it goes really well together, grows very fast, and it's really good by itself, on salads, anything. So once you've drained the water out and you have the, the soaked seeds, uh, most of the water should be out. It's okay if there's just a little left in the bottom. But what you want to do is turn it upside down and let it drain. The other, other options would be if you have a stand, you can lean it this way, or you could just lay it in your bowl. You want to let the water be able to drain out. For the first couple days, you want to put this in a dark place so you can put it in your kitchen cupboard or in a pantry with the door closed. But uh, you'll want to rinse this twice a day. So once in the morning, once in the evening is usually a good time. And then uh, after doing this for three days, we should see a lot of activity in the jar. This is five days later. Um, a lot of these have made significant changes. Uh, one thing we'll notice here is that they're starting to green up and uh, get taller. Um, here, the same thing, they're getting green. This is the kale on this side. And this is the superfood mix here. So this has got quite a few different things in it. The kohlrabi, the radish, the collard, and the turnip. This is the peas, and this is interesting because I overplanted it. Uh, the, the pea seeds will swell when they get wet, and there's now too many in here. So like this one on top it isn't sprouting right now. So one of the things you can do is either pull these out and start a new tray, or you can just let them sprout the way they are and you'll just have more unsprouted seeds in the bottom. But since we're gonna trim the tops when it gets full, it'll be just fine. So just something to remember that some of the bigger seeds do swell. Here's the wheat grass, and this you can see is really growing good. And these are sunflowers, and they're starting to grow really well also. One of the things that we did was we put the broccoli in here, and I, this was just to show you can do any vessel that you want. Here are some peas that are sprouting, and this is another um, mix of seeds. It's just on a wet, damp, a damp paper towel and a plastic plate. All right, so we've seen lots of changes in these too. This started out as just two tablespoons of seeds in the very bottom five days ago, and now they are just about ready to eat. This is the five part salad blend. And if you look, it is all the way to the top. So this now, we're letting it green up a little bit. It's been sitting in the window for about seven hours, and we're gonna let it stay in the sun overnight, all of these. And this one in particular, we can probably start eating tomorrow. This is the clover, and this is also seeing tremendous growth. The broccoli is completely full. That's just about ready also. This is the kale. We're gonna give this maybe another two days or so. And then the protein beans, this is the one that takes the longest because these are just bigger. But we are seeing some sprouts come off of that, and we're gonna let that go until they look a little bit more like some of these. So maybe two to three more days on this one. So as you can see, five days, and we've gone from seeds to something edible. Well, so this is eight days later, and you can tell that our wheatgrass has grown a lot. These are our sunflowers, the peas. These are also peas in just a different cup. And then check that out. This is our sprouts mix that we're ready to eat. So one of the things that you'll notice what, what we've got going on here is the roots have grown out through the bottom of the tray and now they're getting their water from the bottom of the tray, which is called bottom watering. And that kind of helps uh, develop the root structure and then it helps keep the moisture off the top of these so they don't get mildewy in a real damp, cold environment. And you will see that they're growing a little slower than they might in the summertime just because it does get colder here at night. So these, you could trim and juice them or put them in your salad or give them to your cat or rabbit. This is just wheatgrass and it's just ready to go. These are the sunflowers and you can just kind of brush the seeds off the top. They're just about ready to fall off on their own. I think we'll give these another day or so and then they'll all start looking like this. 
And when the leaves are just a little bit bigger, then they're ready to, to cut and to eat. These will give a couple more days as well, and then they'll be nice and big, and we'll be able to eat those also. So these are our speckled peas, and these are amazing. They are perfect. Look how tall they are, especially compared to the jar. Um, and they have a super amazing root system down under. So now they're getting all their moisture and all their uh, nutrients from the from their roots from the bottom. So now these are ready to harvest. You can trim the tops, and you might get another little growth on those, or we can just trim all the way from the bottom. We'll use the whole thing and just put this in your salad, put it over a sandwich, even try it on an omelet. These are delicious. So this is our protein bean mix, ready to harvest. Look at those long roots there. You just eat the whole thing. And look how packed it is in here. So. All this you can just add to your salad. You can eat it just straight. Put a little salad dressing on it, eat it with a fork, mix it with anything, top it, top anything with it. So this is the wheatgrass, and now that we're done here, it's ready to harvest. It's got an amazing root system down there. And to harvest this, we'll just give it a haircut. You can either trim just a little bit from right up here and put, put this in your salad. You could cut the whole thing and juice it, or if you want, you can give it to your animals, your cats, chickens. We have ducks, we give it to the ducks. They like it just as well. This is our superfood mix. You can see that these have, uh, the middle was the, the tallest here. It's pretty common around the edges. Things tend to get a little uh, thinner, but these are also ready to harvest right now. So we would do this the same as the peas or the wheatgrass or anything else. Just get your clean scissors in there, trim it off. Good. Since these were grown in soil, there might be just a little bit of uh, dirt that gets caught up in there. So these always should, use a, should get a little rinse before you eat them. And we'll just keep trimming. Well, thanks for joining us. I hope that you guys have uh, had some fun, learned a few things. Uh, it's very easy to grow sprouts in a jar. As you can see, these took uh, less than a week. Uh, the microgreens take a little longer. These took almost two weeks because right now the weather is not as cooperative as it has been. But even uh, you can even get a good crop right here. Um, and these are all delicious. So I hope that you enjoyed the journey with us.